Next, we will take a look at the velocity magnitude contours and compare and contrast it to the pressure contours. Instead of creating a new, new contour, what I'm going to do is go to pressure contours here, right click, and say duplicate. And I will call this velocity magnitude contours. OK. I'll turn off pressure contours. Double click on velocity magnitude contours to edit it. So I'm making sure that I'm editing the velocity magnitude contours and change the variable from pressure to velocity and that's the velocity magnitude and apply. What do we see here? We see that there is low velocity at the front. In fact, there is a stagnation point where the the flow will come to, you know, where the velocity is zero right at the front. And then the velocity is relatively high as it goes around the cylinder. And then due to the separation, you get low pressure region right behind the uh, low velocities right behind the cylinder. Let's contrast that to the pressure. So we'll um, we will plot them side by side, in fact, top and bottom. So I'll go here and select this view. And I will say, do not synchronize visibility in displayed view, so I can plot different things in the two windows. But I'll synchronize the camera so that I'll get the same view in both. Okay, so this view has been taken and replicated here. So here I want to plot the velocity and I can uh, click here or I can type in Z <coughs> to, to get the view along Z and let me zoom in here. Okay, that looks fine. And if I click on this window, then I can select what I want to plot in that window or view here. So over there I'll plot the pressure contours. Okay, and let me zoom in here. And uh, let me make sure I have 21 contours, okay. And maybe zoom in a little bit more to see what's happening right near the cylinder. So what we see here is that we have low velocity in the front and high pressure, and then relatively high velocity at the top and low pressure. So it's the inverse of what's happening here. At the back, you get low velocity and low pressure. And this actually throws students off because they think, you know, many of them think that if you have low velocity here, you should have high pressure here because that's what the Bernoulli's equation is telling you. But the Bernoulli's equation is not applicable here. That's because as a fluid particle moves from, you know, around the cylinder, viscous uh, friction due to viscous effects is very significant. Um, that's because the flow is low Reynolds number, and secondly, you have separation. And the viscous friction invalidates the Bernoulli's equation because when you derive the Bernoulli's equation, you're neglecting viscous friction. So you cannot apply Bernoulli's equation and you get low velocity and low pressure behind the cylinder and that matches with our expectations from pre-analysis. So you have low kinetic energy and low quote unquote pressure energy, which means you have lost energy. And that energy loss manifests itself as uh, low pressure behind the cylinder. So you have high pressure here, low pressure here, um, and so you get a net pressure force in that direction, which is the drag. So by this reasoning, you can see how the 
loss in energy leads to the drag because it leads to loss of pressure behind the cylinder. Let's go back to a single view. So I'll click on this uh, view one and then go back and select that.